Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome to Amazed by the Quran, a series in which I share with you what I find amazing about the Quran. Today is a tough lesson. I think I'm, I've got my head wrapped around there on how to explain this to you to make sense of it all. So bear with me. The first thing I'll remind you of is like once again the difference between a noun and a verb. Nouns, permanent, verbs, temporary. The second um, is actually a concept in Arabic speech, uh, an ancient concept that you don't really find a parallel for in the English language, certainly not modern English. So the Arabs, when they talk about a certain act, like I ate, or I slept, or I hit, or something, you know, I drove. If they really want to emphasize it, they'll actually repeat the same act as a noun again at the end. They call it maf'ul mutlaq, which is not important. But it'll sound something like this in English. It'll, it'll be like, I bit a bite. Right? Or I bit it a bite. Now, what in the world does that mean to them? It actually means I totally bit that thing, man. I chowed it down. I slept asleep. Nimtu noman. You could just say I slept. That means I slept. But they'll say I slept a sleep to say, man, I was like tranquilized or something. I was out. You know? So they'll add the act as a noun against a sleep. To them is a, is a noun, nimtu nauman. So they, they use this to emphasize the act that they've done. They'll repeat it. So they'll say, darabtuhu darban, I hit him a hit. Which basically means I pounded him, I destroyed the guy. That's what that means, okay? So that's one concept that I want you to be familiar with, the idea of repeating the act as a noun to emphasize the act. That is part of the style of Arabic language. It's certainly found in the Quran, the concept of maf'ul mutlaq. But before I give you the examples from the Qur'an, I need to give you two concepts. So the, the one concept was this idea of the emphasizer. The second concept is actually found in all languages, the difference between transitive verbs and intransitive verbs. Now, those are big words, so let me explain what that means. When I say I sat, the verb is I sat. Who does that affect? It affects myself. When I say I seated, when I say I seated, it actually doesn't affect me. It affects someone who I seated. If I say, I slept, it affects me. If I say, I put to sleep, it affects someone else. You understand? So, uh, or for instance, if I were to say, I stood, right? Uh, that would actually refer to myself. But if I say, I made someone stand, okay? Or I established or something, then you're talking about something else. So when things affect you, they are intransitive. And when things affect someone else, those acts are transitive, okay? Simple enough. Now the thing is, when you're talking about something intransitive, I slept, then the verb, the noun you're going to use to emphasize it should also be intransitive. You can't say, I slept putting to sleep. They'll say, I slept asleep, okay? Or I napped a nap, or I hit a hit. You see what I'm saying? So the, the verb and the noun need to correspond to each other. So if the first one was affecting someone else, the second one should affect someone else. And if the first one was affecting you, the second one should also affect you. That's logical. Except the Quran breaks this rule on, a mul on multiple occasions. So I'll give you three examples of that today. You have in the Quran, the Prophet wasallam in the middle of the night being asked to pray half the night, a third of the night. And one of the statements that's made, why should he pray in the middle of the night? Everything's still, there are no distractions. Allah says, وَتَبَتَّلْ إِلَيْهِ تَبْتِيلًا Batal in Arabic means to cut off. So tabattal actually means to cut yourself off. Now when you cut yourself off, is that transitive or intransitive? That's intransitive because it affects you. I'm cut off. Cut yourself off from all your worries. Cut yourself off from all the wor all the things that happened today. Cut yourself off from all the mean things the Quraysh said. Cut yourself off from all your anxieties and fears that you're not going to be able to do your job. Cut yourself off completely. Focus to Allah. So the idea of tabatul, I and mean, when you use ila with it, means on the one hand, cut yourself off from all distractions and all other thoughts and all other concerns, and now connect yourself entirely to Allah. Tabatul ilayhi. Okay. But Allah didn't just want to say focus towards Him. Cut yourself off and focus towards Him. He wanted to say completely and totally cut yourself off 
and focus towards them. Now, because cutting yourself off is intransitive, the language expected was tabattal ilayhi tabattula. The same word, furthered as a noun, cut yourself off, focus towards him, a focus. Right? That's what the examples I gave you. Except the word is not tabattula, it's tabattal ilayhi tabtila. Different word altogether, different family. This word is actually transitive, means to make someone focus. It doesn't mean to focus, it means to make someone focus. Uh, also means to have perfect focus. There's two meanings. So you know what Allah has done? Focus towards Him, making someone focus. Instead of focus towards Him, a focus. That's incredible. Because now the Prophet is being told Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that you need to focus towards Allah in your exclusivity in a way that will inspire countless others and you will make them focus. You're not just, because you know, the act of Qiyamul Layl is for yourself. Like standing in the middle of the night and praying is totally just for yourself, nobody else, not for the Prophet. His exclusive focus to Allah in the middle of the night will set a precedent for millions upon millions upon millions to come. Focus towards Allah in a way that will make others focus towards Him. So it actually captured the perfection of His focus, it captured the emphasis on focus, but it also captured the fact that He has to leave a legacy. SubhanAllah. Now let's take this uh, two more examples. I know this one's long, but since we've established, I took so much brain juice of yours to establish these two points now, I need to get as many examples in along these lines as possible, okay? So two more. About shaitan now. Allah says, يُرِيدُ shaitanu أَنْ يُضِلَّهُمْ ضَلَالًا بَعِيدًا Here's a common translation. Shaitan wants to misguide them a far away misguidance. By the way, dalal in Arabic isn't just misguidance, it's to be lost. Lost far away. Shaitan doesn't just want you to be lost, he wants you to be lost far, far away, right? Way far from the, the path that you're supposed to be on. Now, let me translate that again. Shaitan wants to misguide them a great misguidance. See the emphasizer? Like he totally wants to misguide them. Now tell me, the act of misguiding, like Shaitan misguided them or wants to misguide them, is that an act that affects him or others? Others. It's transitive. But the emphasizer is intransitive. Lost, to be lost. Not to be misguided, but to be lost. He didn't say he wants to misguide them a misguidance, which would further his own act, but rather the emphasizer says he wants to misguide them as they themselves are lost. If Allah said, idlalan ba'ida, then it would have been shaitan totally wants to misguide them and there would be no blame put on anyone except Shaitan, because the entire thing is transitive, him affecting others. But the, emph uh, the emphasizer is intransitive, one that affects yourself. By combining those two, so the verb is transitive and the emphasizer is intransitive, Allah actually created a partnership between those two verbs, saying Shaitan wants to misguide them, but what kinds of people does he actually misguide? People that themselves get lost. He didn't want to take the blame off of people. So he put that in there. SubhanAllah, Dalal and Ba'id. That's incredible. You know? <laughs> so nobody gets to say, well, you know, Shaitan's fault. Now, last one. This is my favorite one. Boy, is this my favorite one. Uh, I'll set this up for you. You know, sometimes, actually, no, I won't set it up for you. I'll just go straight to the example. It's even better. Zakariya salam was the uncle of Maryam. And he was responsible for her upbringing. So Allah describes that he raised her. It's such beautiful language because when he talked about raising her, he used the word ambata. And ambata is used in Arabic when you cultivate a plant. When you grow a tree or you take care of a farm. That's imbat, to help something sprout, to help something grow. So he helped her grow. He allowed her to, 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 to mature. This is ambata. Obviously that is transitive because he is maturing her. He is raising her. You with me? Yeah. Right? So he raised her. Now if this was totally him, he totally raised her beautifully. Ambataha imbatan hasanan would have been the language. Ambataha imbatan hasanan would have meant that he completely and absolutely raised her in the most beautiful way. The Arab way of saying it 
would be, he raised her a raising, right? But he didn't say it. The first part is transitive because it's him affecting her. The emphasizer is intransitive, is all about her, with no relation to him. The ayah says, Ambataha nabatan hasanan. He raised her a beautiful growing. Not raising, but growing. And when you say a plant grows, you're giving it credit. When you say, I grow a plant, you're giving me credit. The first part of the ayah, he raised her, gives him credit. The second part of the ayah, a beautiful growing, and instead of a beautiful raising, gives her credit. So Allah is saying that it's not enough that you provide a wonderful environment, a nurturing, caring environment. You take care of someone, you give them the right education. Like for example, a farmer who says, I should give the soil plenty of water, I should take care of the soil, I should make sure it's soft, I should make sure it gets a lot of sun, I should remove all insects and weeds and things like that from it, I should do as, as much as I can. The farmer can do as much as he can if the seed itself is defective. You could have all the environment, it won't happen. I mean, think of the, the, the wives of Nuh and Lut. It's the most beautiful environment. You're the spouse of a prophet. You can't get a better environment. There's something inherently wrong with you though. So you cannot take advantage of the environment. Look at the uncle of a, the Prophet himself, sallallahu alayhi wa next door neighbor, Abu Lahab. You can't get a more beautiful environment than that. What would we, what would we pay? What would we be willing to do to be next door neighbors to Rasulullah <laughs> like, How do you get that close and not take advantage? There's something inherently wrong with you. So now we're learning that there are two parts to people coming out right. There's, there's outside factors and there are inside factors. In the case of Maryam, you know, you could provide the best environment, but that wouldn't be enough. She would have, the ha she, she would have to have the nurturing, like the, the, the desire to want to grow and the, the inherent goodness herself for this to work. And so Allah highlighted her awesomeness and His awesomeness together, the best environment and the best child at the same time. SubhanAllah, both of them come together. So, and of course, you know, I, I share these things with you because this is just almost impossible to capture in translation, right? So, shaitan totally wants to misguide them. Focus on him entirely, focus on Allah entirely. Or, he raised her beautifully. That's all it's going to say. What, what, what more are you going to get? You're going to miss this amazing wisdom of the Qur'an that you can only appreciate when you go from lazim to muta'addi, transitive to intransitive to transitive, when you understand the emphasizer and the role of the emphasizer. God, this stuff is so cool, man. The only challenge is, this stuff is so technical and so grammatical. I mean, you might have found that this was really technical. I don't know. I hope I made this somewhat easy to understand. Watch it a couple of times, I think you, you get it, right? But the, the challenge is that you have to study like years of grammar before they discuss this juicy stuff. So I want to save you guys some years, show you the juicy stuff, and here's my intention. My intention is, you become so curious about what other treasures are lying in the Qur'an, you know, buried under its Arabic, that you want to learn Arabic so you can explore these treasures yourself. And so you can directly be amazed by this book. May Allah Azza wa make all of us continually amazed by the Qur'an. Barakallahu li wa lakum. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.